So although Will is our resident roguelike expert, even developing his own roguelike in his spare time, I wanted to take a minute to talk about some other rogue-inspired games I've enjoyed recently, and why I think I'm drawn to them more than others. Often a great many modern roguelikes sacrifice any attempt at narrative in service of their specific gameplay hook. You're meant to want to replay the game because of how fun the gameplay is, not necessarily because you're in pursuit of some compelling story. But not such with the games I'd like to highlight. These games have taken the randomized, chaotic stylings of modern roguelikes and formed them into some of the most unique stories of the past few years. In the first video in this series of currently unspecified length, I'll be talking about Bay Area indie darling Supergiant Games' latest release, the impeccably crafted Hades. Hades is the new gold standard for how to incorporate a narrative into a roguelike. I've been playing a whole lot of it these past few days, and I've been in absolute awe of just how much narrative content there actually is in this game. I keep trying to guess where I am in the whole arc of the narrative, and I think that I may still be only about two-thirds of the way through the story. There are still a whole lot of tabs in my codex just labeled Undiscovered, so even though I've made it through the whole complete core gameplay loop seven times as of the writing of this passage of the script, which in most games would mean I'd already seen the credits roll many times over, there is still more to discover. Over some 60-odd run-throughs of the Underworld, only one voice-acted NPC has ever repeated their dialogue, and only one other random Underworld shade has repeated their same text-based dialogue, but in that instance actually prompted Zagreus, the player character, to say, hey, I've heard that one before. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Hades is a game about repetition. Sisyphean, one might say, though Sisyphus is actually a character in Hades, just not the player character. You're attempting to escape the underworld, the reasons for which are slowly revealed over the course of play. The randomized roguelike elements are incorporated into the narrative from the start, explained away as part of the ever-shifting landscape of the underworld's passageways, in an effort by Hades, Lord of the Underworld, to prevent your escape to the surface. His own reasons for such action themselves also obfuscated and slowly revealed over the course of play. The narrative is your catalyst for fighting your way back through the underworld every time you're beat back by Lord Hades' armies of darkness. Every escape attempt is in service of the narrative. Now, some of the story is revealed through your escape attempts through the underworld, mostly through your brief interactions with the distant Olympian gods, but the bulk of the story is revealed in the House of Hades, the location of both the start of your journey and the home you'll return to every time you die attempting to escape it. And once you actually reach the surface, the way Hades explains away why you need to return to the underworld is totally believable, if not more than a bit tragic. And so the cycle begins again, as Supergiant dangles more of Hades' deeply compelling narrative on a distant stick far away at the end of each run through the underworld. The story of Hades is your reward for advancing through the ever-twisting and shifting passageways of this mythological version of the afterlife. Sure, there are also permanent upgrades to pursue, new weapons to try, and new aesthetic changes to commission in the house, but the story is why I, and I imagine a lot of people playing Hades, kept coming back and kept trying to push myself a little further through the underworld. Now, when I began writing this story, I thought I must have been pretty close to the end of the story. But more and more, I've realized that the part of the game I thought was near the end was little more than the end of the first act, if we are to imagine Hades conforming to a traditional three-act structure. The story is expansive and endlessly compelling. Even in the game's one-off conversations, you'll find yourselves having with the myriad denizens of the underworld. People Make Games recently released a great look into how Hades' adaptive dialogue system actually works, and it made me think that perhaps roguelikes might actually be one of the better game genres in terms of their capacity for deep story and character development. We always talk about games like The Last of Us or Firewatch as games with these great, awe-inspiring stories, which they certainly are, but the way Hades is able to develop its characters through its randomized, repeating environments is truly something to behold. For example, once you reach the surface for the first time and eventually arrive back in the underworld, Lord Hades slaps a pact of punishment on the door out of his house. A pact you'll need to fulfill if you want to keep earning each of the rare currencies dropped by the bosses of each level of the underworld. 
One of the perks you can enable in the pact is called Extreme Measures, which gives the bosses of the underworld new behaviors. The first time I enabled it and stumbled into the boss room of Tartarus, a room which in every previous escape attempt had only contained one of three Furies at a time, now had within it all of the Fury sisters. One became the primary opponent, but the other two would swoop in to provide support from time to time. Before this encounter, I'd met each of the Furies a number of times and had learned a bit about each of their personalities and what they think about each other. So on an even later run, when I'd turned off the Extreme Measures perk and once again reached the end of Tartarus, I was pleasantly surprised when Megara, the first Fury you'll meet, commented about how happy she was I changed the terms of the pact, because her sisters had been getting on her nerves. In Hades, all these characters actually observe your journey, and this drives their remarks. I think I may also have had some predisposition to enjoy the story of Hades because back in college I performed in Ovid's Metamorphosis, playing the characters of Bacchus, or Dionysus in Hades, and Orpheus. A uh, minor correction, I just went back and found the actual script that I used for the show, and it was Mary Zimmerman's adaptation of a David R. Slavit translation of Ovid's Metamorphosis. So, fact check. I felt a special kinship to Orpheus specifically since he and I were both musicians, and so when I stumbled upon Eurydice during one of my many journeys through Asphodel, I was doubly motivated to continue, knowing that somewhere in this world I would surely find Orpheus. Knowing the mythology behind Hades made it that much more interesting to play. Now, I did tweet at Supergiant's creative director Greg Cassavin to see if any such inspiration came from Zimmerman's adaptation of Metamorphoses, and he confirmed that of Hades' inspirations, Zimmerman's Metamorphoses was not one of them. And even for those who, like me, are already familiar with the myths and legends that served as the inspiration for Hades' story, Cassavin and company have expanded and elaborated upon those stories in marvelous and surprising ways. Now, while this video is really just about how Hades is a great narrative game within its respective genre, I do want to highlight how phenomenal the gameplay of Hades is. This game has been scratching the itch I've had since playing Hyperlight Drifter in 2016. With how small each nugget of narrative development is at the end of each traversal of the underworld, Hades' gameplay is a huge boon to the player's holistic experience of the game. I still feel like I'm just scratching the surface of Hades' storytelling, and I can't wait to dive back in and discover more of Supergiant's amazing world. Also, Dusa deserves the world. If you're not giving Dusa a gift every time you see her, you're playing Hades wrong. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.